On the north bank, we pass by the entrance of the Ogana River. Its mouth is narrow, but, the natives told me, always deep, even in the height of dry season. It is a very considerable river, running inland to the east-northeast. Little is known about it, save that it is narrowed into a ravine course above, which it expands ab above which it expands again. The banks of it are thickly populated by fans, who send down a considerable trade and have an evil reputation. In the main stream of the Ogwe below the Okanagas, Okanaz entrance is a long rocky island called the Shandi. When we were getting over our ridge and paddling about the Ogana's entrance, my ears recognized a new sound, the rush and roar of the Ogwe we knew well enough, and could locate which particular obstacle to his headlong course was making him say things. It was either those immovable rocks which threw him back in foam, whirling wildly, or it was that fringe of gaunt skeleton trees hanging from the bank playing a pull devil pull baker contest that made him hiss with vexation but this was an elemental roar i said to mambo that's a thunderstorm away among the mountains no sir he says he that's the alemba we paddled on towards it hugging the right hand bank again to avoid the mid-river rocks for a brief space the mountain wall ceased and a lovely scene opened before us. We seemed to be looking into the heart of the chain of the Sierra de, del Crista. The abrupt shaped, abruptly shaped mountains encircling a narrow plain or valley before us, each one of them steep in slope, every one of them forest clad, one whose name I know not, unless it be, unless it be what is sometimes put down as Mount Okana on the French maps, had a conical shape which contrasted beautifully with the more irregular curves of its companions. The color down this gap was superb and very Japanese in the evening glow. The more distant peaks were soft gray blues and purples, those nearer indigo and black. We soon passed this lovely scene and entered the walled-in channel, creeping up what seemed an interminable hill of black water, then through some whirlpools and a rocky channel to the sand and rock shore of our desired island, Kondo Kondo, along whose northern side tore in thunder the Alemba. We made our canoe fast in a little cove among the rocks, and landed pretty stiffly and pretty stiff and tired, and considerably damp. This island, when we were on it, must have been about a half a mile or so long, but during the long wet season a good deal of it is covered, and only the higher parts, great heaps of stones among which grows a long branch willow-like shrub, are above or nearly above water. The Aduma from Kembe Island especially drew my attention to this shrub, telling me his people who worked the rapids always regarded it with an affectionate veneration, for he said it was the only thing that helped a man when his canoe got thrown over in the dreaded Alemba, for its long, tough branches swimming in or close to the water are ver veritable lifelines, and his best chance, a chance which must have failed some poor fellow, whose knife and leopard skin belt we found wedged in among the rocks on Kondo Kondo. The main part of the island is sand, with slabs and tables of polished rock sticking up through it, and in between the rocks grew in thousands most beautiful lilies, their white flowers having a very strong scent of vanilla, and their bright light green leaves looking very lovely on the glistening pale sand among the black grey rocks. How, long, how they stand the long submersion they must undergo, I do not know. The natives tell me that they begin to spring up as soon as, as ever the water falls and leaves the island exposed, that they were soon grown up and flower and keep on flowering until the Ogwe comes down again and the rides rush and rides roughshod over Kondo Kondo for months. While the men were making their fire, I went across the island to see the great Alemba Rapid, of which I had heard so much that lay between it and the north bank. Nobler pens than mine must sing its glory and its grandeur. Its face was nothing like nothing I have ever seen before. Its voice was like nothing I have heard. Those other rapids are not to be compared it to. Com those other rapids are not to be compared to it. They are wild, headstrong, and malignant enough. But the Alemba is not as they. 
It does not struggle and writhe and brawl among the rocks, but comes in a majestic springing dance, a stretch of waltzing foam, triumphant.